Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sandy Frank's political podcast for a people's revolution against the corporate fascist state. I am your host, Sandy Frank, and today we're going to be talking about a lot of things, but mainly we're going to be talking about uh, Russia. We're going to be talking about the constant fake news story of the uh, the the non-existent uh, Russian hack that ooh the the corporate media, especially on the Democratic elite party side, the the this fake news story that they've been perpetuating for months upon months upon months, continuously the only story that they talk about, the only thing that they're fucking talking about ever, which is the fake news uh, Russia story that Russia had any type of uh, any type of effect on on the 2016 uh, presidential election. Believe me, there was uh, hacking and there was uh, voter manipulation or whatever it is. We're going to get into the the entire lie of the Russia thing, but believe me, there was hacking in this election, and it was not Russia, and it was not Donald Trump. And just to <laughs> clarify, uh, I am no Donald Trump fan, I am no Vladimir Putin fan, I am no fan of the neo-fascist uh, uh, movement that is that is sweeping the world, uh, that is that is being raised up by the corporate media, the, the Donald Trump neo, neo-Nazi movement. Uh, I, I'm no fan of these people, but in order to counter this this movement, in order for the progressive uh, and uh, well, the people's movement to uh, to counter the these neo Nazis in a real way, we need to meet them in an, a place of policy. Because this Russia story, this fake news Russia story, is of course giving Donald Trump and the neo fascists more power, which is the point. Uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, the corporate media is doing this, uh, of course, one, to, to save their own hide in the, uh, because of the monumental loss they were just put through, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it's also to, uh, to give power to these neo-fascist movements to, uh, really paint populist people's movements as, fascist, and we'll get into all of this in a moment, but, uh, you know, we, 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 we see the constant, 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 uh, Russia, Russia, Russia nonsense coming out of MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, NPR, uh, PBS, constant, con- Comedy Central, all of the corporate media, constant, uh, and what are they actually saying? You know, it, it changes from day to day, of course, because it's such nonsense, but, you know, on one hand, they'll say it was, it was Russian hacking that, well, some people are saying that it, it was Russian hacking on the ele- actual election day on, you know, polling places and, and, and voting machines and all this, uh, which, of course, I just said happened, but it wasn't Russia, and it wasn't Trump, and it wasn't the fucking Easter Bunny. It was the establishment, Democratic and Republican establishment sides who, <laughs> one, have the power to commit this type of hacking, and two, you know, ha- we have the evidence that they actually did do it in the... In the, in the Democratic primaries uh, and also uh, in the general election. And of course, this didn't just happen to you know, pop out of nowhere in 2016. You know, there's always, always voting, uh, voting manipulation, voting machine manipulation. You know, we, we saw it with, uh, you know, Ron Paul's campaign from, from, from years back. You know, this is always going on because, uh, uh, our, our, 
election system is completely in the hands of of uh, of, of of the 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 U.S. government, and you know, completely. Uh, when Barack Obama was going out the door, he 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 gave complete control of our election systems to the uh, to the U.S. government. But even before that, our our election systems are completely compromised and uh, our democracy is completely uh, bought and paid for by the the corporate elites who run the show uh, but the Russia sh uh, the Russia fake news story you know we have the one fake claim that Russia hacked on election day but then they the, the big other one is uh, is that Russia hacked uh, uh, John Podesta's emails, and and Russia and Russian agents were the ones who who uh, who uh, you know were the ones who uh, got these emails. With with we don't we have not seen a shred of evidence proving this. We have not seen any type of uh, evidence proving that this is what happened at all. No evidence whatsoever that Russia had anything to do with, uh, anything to do with the, uh, the email leak. Uh, so what do we actually know about the email leak? Well, we know that a, uh, you know, we know about, we know about Seth Rich and the You know this murdered DNC staffer, who you know was uh, he was shot in the head in uh, Washington D.C. in one of the the safest, uh, best policed areas in the country. You know they called it an execution style uh, robbery, but nothing was taken from him. His phone and wallet were. We're still on. We're still on his person, uh, and we see uh, we see the uh, the dates on all of the John Podesta emails are. As we see, there's not one of those emails dated after the assassination of uh, Seth Rich. The 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 DNC staffer, uh, you know we we see you know who it was leaked to Julian Assange of uh, WikiLeaks and and WikiLeaks, uh, you know of course they don't give away their sources, but we we, we see uh, you know WikiLeaks talking about Seth Rich, you know offering money for information on on on. What happened to Seth Rich and, uh, you know, the way Julian Assange talks about this poor, this poor kid who was, you know, most likely just a, a Bernie Sanders supporter who wanted to, uh, who, who wanted to do the right thing when, uh, when Seth Rich leaked those emails, uh, you know, he, he did the right thing, regardless of, like, what was actually in the emails. Uh, you know, we have no way of knowing if, uh, you know, what Seth Rich saw or what he looked at, but he must have seen something to, to, to show that, uh, you know, of course these emails should have been leaked, but, you know, even if, even if he didn't, even if he just knew that these were John Podesta's emails, of course, of course you have a moral obligation to to leak that information, uh, <laughs> you know, John Podesta uh, is one of the most powerful people in the world, uh, you know, Forbes magazine ranked him, I believe, second or third most powerful lobbyist in the United States government, uh, so of course, uh, John Podesta's emails are, 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 therefore, you know, should be made public, uh, public knowledge. Of course they should, because of this person in power, but, uh, 
you know, Seth Rich had the ability to leak these emails. He had the access. He he was up on that type of of platform to to be able to access these types of things. And uh, you know, the the mysterious assassination uh, of Seth Rich. It's just a ridiculous farce, a ridiculous uh, joke of. Of, of our of the justice system in this in this shithole of a country uh, where 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 a, a government staffer uh, can be shot in the head and uh, nothing nothing stolen from him in in one of the safest uh, best policed uh, communities in, in the United States uh, you know, one of these places around D.C., Maryland, very prosperous, affluent places, where, and we can just see the the sham of of our democracy that that is that is done. But you know, nevertheless, we we have the the deep state putting out the information that that it was Russia. You know, just like the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, we have we have no proof of uh, you know Russia having anything to do with these leaks whatsoever and Julian Assange roundly denying that Russia had anything to do with it and uh, you know we see WikiLeaks it's a very credible you know they have a hundred percent accuracy of the information they put out you know uh, but uh, you know, so that's <laughs> that's another part of the the bullshit Russia leak story. We have Russia hacking the actual election for Trump. Russia hacking John Podesta's emails and releasing them. Uh, and this was months and months before uh, the election. These these corporate shills are saying things like, "Ooh, the the leak of the emails." You know, coincide so perfectly with the uh, with the election. No, it doesn't. This happened months before, months and months before the election. You know, there's no correlation between uh, the leaks and the election. There is a correlation, however, between the dates of all of those emails and all of them being before the date of. Uh, the assassination of Seth Rich by our government. Huh, that's weird. And, you know, before we get into more of the Russia bullshit, let's talk about the bullshit of Bernie Sanders, who is now, you know, Bernie Sanders prides himself, this asshole prides himself on his Iraq, his no vote for the Iraq war based on, you know, him saying to Hillary Clinton during one of the one of the debates, you know, I got the information uh, that the that the government put out for the weapons of mass destruction, and I didn't believe them. And you know, we were all so excited and happy about this during it, but you know, now we see Bernie Sanders is a complete hypocrite. He'll pride himself on, you know, obviously the weapons of mass destruction were complete bullshit. You know, it's a fact. I mean, obviously, I'm not. You know, obviously, but um, and now, you know, he's completely betraying everything he claims to stand for, and now going along with this fake Russia news story. Bernie Sanders has to be, you know, the most dangerous person now in this entire fake Russia story because, you know, he he had this he had the revolution in our hands that he claimed was going to continue and, and really start after the election, but now he's he's just parroting the lies from the State Department, the deep state that, you know, have gotten us into wars, have killed millions and millions of people, displaced and destroyed the lives of millions, 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 millions more. Uh, and now Bernie Sanders, this snake Bernie Sanders is now going along with Russia bullshit, perpetuating conflict, armed, armed conflict, you know, NATO, 
you know, we are, we're militarizing the borders of, uh, around Russia and around Iran, all around the Middle East, uh, you know, <laughs> so Bernie Sanders is one of the most dangerous people in this fake Russia news bullshit, fake news bullshit, uh, so, you know, number three of the Russia, Russia story is, uh, <laughs> we go into this very vague, amorphous, very vague, uh, 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 fake news story of how Russia, you know, influenced people's minds, how Russia and, you know, supposed agents of the Kremlin, like RT and RT America and the Green Party and, you know, Young Turks even, like, my God, the Young Turks, the most milk toast fucking wanting to kowtow to the Democratic establishment, you know, these, these patsies, and, you know, they're being called these radical Russia, uh, uh, what's the Donald Sutherland movie, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers or whatever, uh, you know, Russia story. So we have one, Russia hacked the election, one, uh, two, Russia hacked, uh, Podesta's emails and WikiLeaks is, uh, and a the agents of the Kremlin, and three, just flat out invasion of the body snatchers, like flat out, uh, red scare, Russia scare, anti communist scare, uh, uh, bullshit. And this is coming out of the Democratic Party, people, the supposed Workers' Party, the supposed party for the people that's now. First of all, conflating socialism and democratic socialism and, 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 and the, uh, these social values with, you know, right-wing extremist uh, Russia and Putin as if, you know, people are stupid and people really are. The democratic establishment and Republican establishment and Trump-loving uh Idiots, and there are a lot of idiots. But uh, yeah, I'm not calling every Democrat, Republican, or Trump supporter uh, idiots. But you know, many, many, many of them are, and they're they're just you know hanging on every word of the corporate media. But um, you know, we see <laughs> we see this we see this ridiculous story of Russia controlling the narrative of RT. And who? Fucking Tom Hartman? You know, Jenk Uger? Some of the most milquetoast wanting to be establishment Democrats, wanting to, to cozy up to the likes of scum like Elizabeth Warren and Keith Ellison and uh, you know, all these, this is Patty Murray scum. You know. So this is the the nonsense story coming out of uh, about Russia. You know this very vague kind of kind of thought of uh, you know the right. You know this invasion of the body snatchers narrative. Uh, you know it just makes you think like. Do they think the Russians put some sort of mind control serum in the water? So a lot of people have, on Twitter, have been joking about, you know. Uh, but now we go into all of the nonsense that's going on right now. The fourth, so we go into number four of the uh, of the Russia Russia nonsense is that <laughs> Trump's appointees, Trump's many of Trump's cabinet members have spoken to Russian officials and to Rus you know Russian diplomats and all this and whatnot you know as if you know diplomats and government officials talking to each other is against the law or is just treasonous which is ridiculous it's just so bizarre um, it's just so so insane that 
you know, they put it this constant, constant corporate news coverage of of just nonsense points. Un, you know, they can't prove what uh, any of Trump's members were even speaking about, but uh, you know, they're they're trying to trick people into thinking that that talking to Russian members of our government, talking to other members of the Russian government is illegal. It's just nonsensical. But it goes on and on and on. Uh, and again, I'm no fan of any... Uh, I hate Jeff Sessions. And that's why I want to counter Jeff Sessions in a way that will actually take Jeff Sessions down. You know, to, to meet them on the plane of ideas and to meet them with revolution and not this nonsense, but you know, this is exactly what you know we're seeing out of corporate media. Uh, you know, this isn't meant to hurt. I mean, it's meant to hurt Trump, but this isn't meant to do anything revolutionary. Uh, you know, all they're trying to do is a uh, do damage control for Hillary Clinton. You know, cheating the election system and being the worst candidate ever. You know, she was too stupid to even lie like Obama did and say how she was going to, you know, be more progressive than Obama. I don't understand why she just didn't lie and say she was going to do single pair and then just not do it. Like, how stupid. Even if she was, of course, she would never do it because, you know, she's so, uh, you know, connected to corporate America, but uh, why not just lie? But, you know, we see uh, you know, they're they're doing the Russian narrative, A, for damage control, and B, to really protect themselves against Trump, because, yeah, again, I'm not a Trump fan, but Trump and his, his pack of wolves now coming into our government... It creates a lot of problems for the Obama people who had been in, and the Clinton people who had been uh, in the places of power and, you know, the doing their own criminal things. You know, not just illegal warfare, but, you know, John Podesta, human trafficking and pedophilia, these things as well, Pedogate and Pizzagate, uh, you know, as well as profiting off of warfare and corporate fascism. But, you know, you, you see the reasons for the Russia thing, which is to, one, do damage control for the Democratic establishment, two, to hurt Trump, because they're afraid that Trump's people are going to try to pander to Trump's base and put a bunch of people in jail and, you know, call that. And that's enough to make the, a lot of the stupid Trump supporters really happy. Uh, and that would work for Trump. And three... Uh, you know, hinder any type of actual revolution. You know, control the narrative of of Trump is Russia instead of Trump is a part of a terrible corporate establishment. That's the same thing as the Democrats and establishment Republicans that is just hurting 99% of people. Of course, that can't be the narrative on MSNBC and CNN and NPR. Uh, of course, uh, they need to create some other type of narrative to, to stop Trump, or to, to stop actual revolution. And, uh, yeah, so those are the reasons and, 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 you know, those are the, they're using, you know, four or more different kinds of fake Russia stories in order to do those three things of, damage control, hurting Trump, and stopping an actual people's revolution, which is what we're here to talk about. So, and now we move on to um, talking about, uh, what was I about to talk about? Shit, I forgot. Uh, Talking about, uh, oh yeah, well, I guess a prediction I made after the State of the Union address was kind of wrong. I said that, you know, right after the, or the day after the State of the Union, 
when we saw the corporate media try to then normalize Trump to try and, uh, because Trump was, obviously the State of the Union was just a way of Trump going, uh, you know, I'm, I will be the same as Barack Obama, I won't stir up trouble, this will be just like Obama, this will be just like Bush, you have nothing to worry about, which is what happened, you know, Trump appeased them and, and said he's, you know, he's obviously not going to try to hurt any of the Democratic or Republican establishment, so, you know, that, the corporate media took that as the, their opportunity to try to bring everything back to normal and normalize Trump, which is what they tried to do, but it seems like there was so much backlash, especially from, you know, even these millions of establishment supporters who have been so brainwashed with anti-Trump media to to hate Donald Trump no matter what, you know, I guess the corporate media saw that, you know, really no one, even establishment lovers, weren't going along with the, you know, fascist, Islamophobic uh, hate speech of the State of the Union address. So, you know, immediately, you know, two days after the, 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 you know, Trump's Adolf Hitler speech, uh, you know, the corporate media went right back to Russia, 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 because they saw that, you know, the last tenuous hold uh, it kept on the uh, uh, on the of support for the corporate establishment wasn't going along with normalizing Trump. So the corporate media then had to go right back to you know, not leading a revolution against Trump, but manufacturing a bullshit narrative of uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. And so we're right back to it. After one day of maybe we could try to normalize Trump and make Trump look like Bush, because now that we've made Bush look like uh, fucking Bob Ross with his paintings of dog anuses, you know, Maybe we can normalize Trump because he was speaking in uh, complete sentences and not unhinged uh, press conference ramblings, you know. But it didn't work. So, boom. Right back to Russia, Russia, Russia. All day long. The only story for months and months and months, you know. And, uh, yeah, we're right back to it. Uh, You know, I... I haven't gotten the information yet on how how much the establishment is has lost uh, since, uh, the, especially the Democratic Party since the, the election of Perez over Ellison, the co- cosmetic little teleplay there. Pre- Perez and uh, Ellison are the same fucking thing. And that's corporate fascists, just as big corporate fascists as Donald Trump. <coughs> Uh, (coughs) but you know there it is they went right back Russia 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 Uh, constant nonsense uh, yeah of, of, of 24 24 hour news and yeah, I really, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, there's only so much Russia, Russia, Russia you can do before people really see what's going on. You know, the, you can only, people are only so stupid. So, you know, it really, it really makes the, the revolution seem like something, the people's revolution seem like something that is really just imminent. Uh, you know, people are... People are really getting organized, <laughs> and again, not just democratic socialists, not just leftists, not just communists, uh, but uh, libertarians, anarchists, conservatives, uh, independents, a lot of people all, all over. This is really, and globally as well. This is really about to come to a head, and uh, our duty is to really make it happen 
as quickly and as uh, strategically as possible. Um, but, you know, the constant Russia, 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 uh, it really, you know, I mean, they, they, they're they going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it, but, you know, they also see how much support they're losing with their constant nonsense, you know. People can really, I know I'm saying a lot of people are really stupid, but people are also really not very stupid. And of course, when we're talking about people's lives and people's livelihoods, you know, uh, you know, when it affects people's self-interests, uh, that's always when people are, you know, realize there's the wool that's been pull, pulled over their eyes. You know, we can only do this for, for so long, but I, I, I don't really know what's going to happen. It's, uh... I mean, it, <laughs> either... Either the people will stand up and, 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 and stop it, or... Or, you know, this Russia thing... Could come to a head, and we could get a conflict, and we could get a major... A major conflict, which is what they want. With either Russia or Iran, or whatever, uh, you know, you don't really, you don't really know, I mean, look at all these Russian, uh, diplomats that are being killed all over, uh, you know, this is, any, any one of these little things could spark this war, <laughs> which is, co of course, what the establishment corporate fascists want, they want a huge conflict where millions will die and they'll profit and um, you know they'll they'll be able to control the narrative with war and uh, you know we could be just like the Iraq war which had you know very little support you know we could just be brought along for the ride we really need to take our power back people we really need a people's revolution that will <coughs> create a, a dictatorship of the proletariat. We really need to silence these and uh, take the resources of these global corporate elitist fascists. We really need to do it. Uh, you know, but we could be dragged into, the, into this conflict and they could they could set the world on fire with the push of a button. We need to act. We need to act very, very quickly because as they see the Russia story losing steam and people not believing this bullshit, uh, they, they'll push for a conflict and they'll push uh, for, for a global war that'll kill millions and they'll push for martial law and they'll they'll shut our internet off and they'll shut our power to communicate off and uh, you know there's a lot of things they can do because they have all the power we've allowed them to seize all the power uh, you know they can keep our water and and, uh, and, and, uh, and our heat you know and everything you know our, our bread and circus they can keep on and our our corporate media, but they can take away our internet, they can take away our power to organize with each other, they can start throwing the revolutionaries in jail by the millions, and putting them in the, you know, the these little constructed camps they've built all over. You know, we've seen the, we've seen the camps, we know they exist. Uh, believe me, you know, this is the next step. You know, just because we don't have smiley face Barack Obama you know just because we have this smiley face democratic establishment government yeah it means nothing all it is is power and uh, you know martial law could be right around the corner throwing actual uh, revolutionaries and actual uh, 
know, people who want to take back the democracy, they'll start putting us in camps by the millions, and uh, they'll start, I mean, it's, it's already begun. You see these laws of anti-protest laws and anti-journalist laws, you know, many of them passed under Barack Obama. This is, uh, you know, never happens overnight. It's been happening for a long time, and we've been letting it happen. We've been uh, very derelict in our in our duty as a responsible citizenry to protect the, our democracy. Very, very derelict. We've been murdered. I mean, of course, the elitists have been waging war forever, but since the fake false flag psyop of September 11th, the controlled demolition, uh, you know, we've been murdering millions and displacing millions and destroying the lives of millions around the world, and you know, many of us haven't, haven't stood up to it. Most of us, you know, but we really need to, uh, we really need to organize and we really need to act, or, you know, we could be behind electrified barbed wire in, uh, in some FEMA camp out in, uh, Wisconsin or something. We need organization and we need action immediately. Global organization and action. And it needs to happen now. Our, our people's movement, our nonpartisan people's movement. Uh, <laughs> because who knows what what's coming? Who knows who knows what their next plan of action is? It could be anything. It could be setting off, you know. A bombs, hydrogen bombs, uh, who knows? But, uh, and you know, as the weather gets nicer, uh, we need to start putting millions of bodies in the street. We need to start, you know, massive, <laughs> not just demonstrations, but, you know, strategized action, organized efforts to come up with, you know, concrete strategies for taking down, using our our numbers and the resources we have to shut down the industries and to shut down the, the war machine and to shut down the corporate fascist state uh, and to resist in a real way and to rebel and revolt in a real way, which is... Uh, you know, that can mean a lot of things. We've talked about action on this program and we've talked about violence on this program uh, a lot before. You know, violence is the fault of the people who create the conditions of, uh, of corporate fascism. It's not, it's not protesters who are to blame for the violence and it's not it's not the oppressed who are to be blamed for the violence, or any type of crime, for that matter, you know. So, massive, massive disobedience is what we have, and massive uh, shutting down of the power structure by any means possible is what we have, folks. <laughs> we don't have militaries, we don't have police forces, we don't have... Uh, you know, all these trillions of dollars of resources we have, we have bodies and we have, and we have, uh, well, we have a lot of things, but, and again, I'm not, I'm not pro-gun, I'm pro the ability for people to take that back their democracy in a real way. You know, and that might mean taking up arms and uh, waging guerrilla warfare like in Cuba, which was successful, of course. You know, even, even though it led to people dying. Even some people who didn't, well, I won't say people deserve to die, but, you know, our democracy is the most important thing we have. And when it's been stolen by corporate elitists, we need to take it back by any means possible. 
that includes violence. And again, I'm not pro-violence, but I understand violence. I understand violence the way that uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Karl Marx and uh, Lenin understood violence. Again, it's, it's the oppressors who create it, not the oppressed. <clears throat> and it is our it's our it's our civic responsibility to 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 take our democracy back and to and to create the world that works for everyone, not just not just the ruling class. So you know, there's that there's that part, and we really need to act before they 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 we start killing. Even more people in the Middle East before we get into a conflict with Iran, before we get into a conflict with Russia. Because believe me, these elitists will <laughs> go into their bunkers and they will they will burn the world down. They'll kill all of us in order to save themselves. That's the way the capitalist system is set up to uh, growth and... and uh, you know, expansion for the ruling class by any means possible. Uh, and again, we've talked about this before. It's the system that's doing this. It's not. It's not Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or or any of the ruling elites. They're just on a, a system that's going out of control. This runaway corporate fascist capitalist system that is set up to to expand and to grow by any means possible, like a cancer. Capitalism is cancer. It, it's, it, it's, it's, its purpose is to, is to grow no matter what. And, uh, you know, we can't let it. We can't let this continue to happen. We have to, we have to be responsible. We need to, we need to stand up to it. Immediately, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, you know, we talk about even more and more pointless. Well, it's not pointless, but killing for profit in the Middle East. Even more and more, we're we're, we're continuing to drone and we're continuing to bomb and kill. And all this, these poor people of Yemen, these poor children. And again, uh, you know, 90% of the people we kill in these drone strikes uh, are not even the intended targets. I won't say terrorists or, or villains or criminals or whatever because, you know, most, you know, that, that's bullshit, but uh, when we talk, we talk about the intended targets of why they're even dropping these bombs. You know, 90% are not even the intended target, and uh, a lot of the time it's children. So, again, we don't call people terrorists because terrorist is a bullshit term. You know, even even of these people who are intended targets who might be, you know trying to do nefarious things to the innocent people in these countries uh, you know that's not the way to solve crime obviously again when the you know when the guy when the the Trump supporter in I forgot where it was but he killed the two the two Indian men and shot up some more uh, you know we didn't go and carpet bomb whatever state that happened in course, I mean, obviously, uh, then, you know, just explaining how war is a racket, it's just a business model to sell carpet bombing children for, you know, the corporate elites, uh, but we, you know, we just talk about how war is an absolute racket, how, uh, how, you know, obviously it's a scam, but, but you know, s maybe not so obviously because so many fucking people in this country believe it, and that speaks to how powerful the corporate media is and how 
powerful mass media is. You can get people to believe anything. You can get people to believe... I mean, of course, the facts tell us that... I mean, and, and obviously, you wouldn't even need studies to show you if you bomb people, you create terrorism, and you create... Uh, create people who, it's not even terrorism, it's people who, you know, it's it's freedom fighters, most of these terrorists, they're just trying to stop U.S. imperialism by any means necessary, which is what we need to do, uh, but, you know, the <laughs> terrorism doesn't exist, it's just the way to uh, scare racist people in this country and in the West uh, to support, uh, bombing and to, and to not, you know, rise up and, and kill the ruling class when they carpet bomb cities. You know, this has been going on for years and years and years now, almost two decades we've, since 9-11, and, uh, the idiot people in this country and in the West, you know, still believe that, uh, they have some type of moral superiority when they've killed millions, supported killing millions uh, based on lies about Islam and and these Muslim nations and Middle Eastern nations uh, but uh, you know of course we know this of course we know that terrorism doesn't exist and uh, you know, we don't even want to call the, the Trump supporter who shot up who killed those two Indian men Indian American men, uh, you know, we don't we don't even call this person a terrorist. He's a criminal, someone who shoots up uh, a place in uh, the United States is a criminal, and you know, a quote unquote suicide bomber in uh, in Pakistan. If that even happened, we have no proof of what even happened. Uh, that, that person would also be a criminal. And you, you solve crime by, you know, helping these Muslim nations that we've destroyed build an actual uh, uh, criminal justice force to, to apprehend the, uh, to apprehend the criminals, you know? Of course you don't carpet bomb Quebec City when a Trump supporter kills six innocent people in a mosque. Of course you don't. A child could tell you you don't. But apparently most of the people in the United States and in the West are, you know, stupider than babies. Yeah. And again, it's not that people are so stupid. It speaks to the power of media again. It speaks to the power of corporate media that People will believe what they hear, you know, it, and that, you know, it's of course the fault of the ruling elite. You know, these people who believe the shit they see on MSNBC or Fox News uh, are victims as well. They're victims as well as the people in the Middle, e the Middle East, millions of people we've bombed and killed and displaced and destroyed the lives of and killed the families of, you know. Uh, I know it sounds disgusting to me for me saying this, but yeah, we're just as much victims as the people we've been bombing and killing, you know, because we've been subjected to this corporate media bullshit psyop that, you know, sociology shows us that people will believe. You know, of course it's... And I, I'm saying even... Even the corporate elitists in these uh, situations are victims too. The people who control the corporate media, who are spreading these brainwashing campaigns, you know, they're they're victims as well. I'll even say, and we're all victims of the bullshit system we've set up called, you know, corporate fascist capitalism. This is the system is the enemy. It's not it's not a person or a group of people. It's, it's this ridiculous system that is, you know, from, you know, from all of human history, which is just the, the preservation of power and the acquisition of more power, you know, it's, it's, it 
it's the power structure that's 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 to blame here. It's not one person. And that doesn't mean I, I don't think we should be putting people in prison for what they've done, like Trump or Clinton or Obama. Uh, I do, but you know that's the point of a prison system. It's to you know maybe when we finally get Obama or Bush or Trump or the Clintons or the Podestas in jail, the point is not to to execute them. The point is point of the prison system is reformation. We want to try to reform these corporate fascists and make them help them and make them see exactly what they've been doing wrong. Um, you know, that's what I want. I don't want, uh, I don't want some mass execution of, uh, of war criminals and, you know, even human traffickers and pedophiles. I want, um, uh, you know, actual reformation of these people, but I, and I also want them out of power, of course, and I want to, to take back our democracy, uh, which is the main thing I want, but, you know, and that doesn't mean, you know, because I want to help these people and because they're victims, that doesn't mean I, I stop believing in revolution. Yeah, I want uh, to help Donald Trump, but I want revolution more. And if Donald Trump isn't going to get out of the way and he gets in the way of a revolution, yeah, Donald Trump could be killed. He could be killed horribly. My God, look at history. I, I, you know, the White House could be ransacked and he could be pulled out and be beaten to death in the streets. And it's not that I want that. It's that it's because we need a, desperately need a revolution or our world will be destroyed by the system that is bombing innocent children, you know? But, you know, revolution first, then then the reformation of, of these corporate fascists. Um, but, you know, we... We want... You know, say the revolution happened tomorrow and we had set up a dictatorship of the proletariat to 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 put a to put a democracy in place which would naturally uh, install communism because communism is what democracy would get us because communism is what the majority of people want, even though even if a lot of people don't understand that they want it because they don't understand communism because they live in the the disgusting corporate elitist west that tells you that communism equals totalitarianism which is ridiculous that's like an orange equaling an apple it doesn't doesn't even make sense i i, I don't even know how to argue something so ridiculous but um they're different things is what i'm saying uh totalitarianism and 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 uh socialism there it's 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 apples and oranges it's just not the same thing uh but say it happened tomorrow and we had the world we wanted uh you know i don't want mass executions of of uh you know of the 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 ruling power i want i want a a prison system that is about you know reformation uh, that you know puts these people away for the rest of their lives, which they deserve. But uh, you know, look, we look at the prison systems in a lot of places in the world. Take, for instance, Portugal, where when you go to prison, you basically get an education, and you get housing, and you get you know you get reformed. You get you you, you receive the tools you need to to make you know to make you realize what what was wrong with what got you in prison in the first place and in, in Trump and Obama and Bush's uh case it would be you know warmongering you know of course i want Barack Obama to be you know deprogrammed from the corporate elitist uh, cabal that that raised him up I want to help Barack Obama, the psychopath. I want to, I want to get him help, and I want to get him reformation. And convalescence is really 
convalescence from his mental uh, mental disorder. But you know that's later. First revolution. So we need to we need to organize and we need to start this people's revolution. But you know that's about it for now. Thank you for listening. My name is Sandy Frank. Please comment, subscribe, like, retweet, follow, whatever it is, whatever it is, across platforms. Help me out, and I will see you in the next one.